Hey there, welcome back to Combinatorics. In this video, we're going to continue discussing counting, combinations, and probability. And we're going to apply what we learned to another lottery. After that, we'll start discussing sets. In the last videos, we focused on the NBA draft lottery. We calculated some probabilities for this lottery, including the probability that the team with the worst record got the second pick in the NBA draft. In this video, we're going to start by focusing on a different lottery. This lottery is called Powerball and it is the lottery that had the largest jackpot ever. And that happened in 2016. $1.6 billion approximately was split by three tickets. In Powerball, players select five distinct numbers from one, two, up to 69. And they select one number from one, two, up to 26. The Powerball lottery has two machines. The first machine contains the white balls. These white balls are numbered one, two, up to 69. There are a total of 69 white balls. The second machine contains the red balls which are called the power balls. They are numbered one, two, up to 26. There are a total of 26 red balls. Five balls are randomly drawn from the white ball machine without replacement. In other words, there are no repeats for the balls. Moreover, the order of the balls does not matter. So choosing the white balls, one, two, three, four, five, is the same as choosing the white balls, two, three, one, five, four. One Powerball is randomly drawn from the Powerball machine. So the first question that we'll look at in this video is what is the probability of hitting the jackpot? And by jackpot, we mean getting all of the correct numbers. The possible outcomes will be pairs of the form x, y. x is a combination of five numbers chosen from one, two, up to 69. And Y is a single number chosen from one, two, up to 26. Thus, the total number of possible outcomes is given by 26 times 69 choose five. 26 being the number of choices for Y and 69 choose five being the number of choices for X. When we multiply those numbers together, we get 292,201,338. There is only one successful outcome if our goal is to win the jackpot. Moreover, all of the outcomes are equally likely. Thus, we can conclude that the probability of hitting the jackpot is 1 over 292,201,338. If we don't get the jackpot, there are still plenty of chances to win prizes in Powerball. For example, if you get 
all of the white numbers, but not the Powerball, you get a million dollars. So the second question we'll look at, what is the probability that you get all of the white numbers right, but not the Powerball? Again, the possible outcomes are just these pairs of the form XY, where X is a combination of five numbers chosen from one, two, up to 69, and Y is a number chosen from the numbers one, two, up to 26. The number of possible outcomes did not change from the last problem. But the number of successful outcomes did change. Now, instead of getting only one successful outcome, we can get 25 successful outcomes. If our goal is to get the five white numbers correct, but not the Powerball number. More specifically, the successful outcomes are the pairs XY, where X is equal to the chosen white combination, and Y is any of the 26 minus one equals 25 numbers besides the chosen Powerball number in the Powerball machine. Again, like the previous problem, all possible outcomes are equally likely. Thus, we can conclude the probability of getting all of the white numbers correct, but not the Powerball, is given by 25 over 292,201,338. And this equals one over 11,688,053.52. Here is a problem. Find the probability of getting exactly four of the white numbers correct and getting the Powerball number correct. Now, we're going to start discussing sets, but we'll see that a lot of the stuff that we've been doing so far can be phrased in terms of sets. In this class, we will only consider finite sets. So a finite set is a finite collection of distinct objects. we call the distinct objects in a set its elements. To say that X is an element of the set S, we can write it with a shorthand notation, X in S. And the symbol that you see between the X and S at the end of the third bullet, bullet is called the element hood relation. The set with the elements one, two, three can be written as one, two, three with squiggle brackets around the numbers. So given a set with any elements, we can write the set as a list of the elements with squiggle brackets. The order of the elements in a set does not matter. So for example, if we have the set 1, 5, 6, 11, this is the exact same set as 5, 11, 6, 1. We define the cardinality of a set to be the number of elements in the set. We can write the cardinality of the set S as we would write the absolute value function. Another word for the cardinality is the size. 
there is a set with cardinality zero. It has no elements. It's called the empty set. And the notation that we use for the empty set is written at the end of the last bullet. Now, let's talk about subsets. If A and B are two sets, we say that B is a subset of A if every element of B is an element of A. So here is a question. If A has cardinality n, how many subsets of A have cardinality k? This question is the same as the number of ways to choose a combination of k distinct numbers from the numbers 1, 2, up to n. And we learned how to count the number of these combinations in the last videos. Thus, we can conclude that A has n choose k subsets of size k. And we found in the last videos that n choose k is equal to n factorial over k factorial times n minus k factorial. If A is a set, we can define another set based on A called the power set of A. And the power set is formed by taking all of the subsets of A. We can denote the power set by writing it as either P of A or two to the A. We use a different font for this P as we use for the probability p. Let's consider an example. We have a set A in the third bullet. A has three elements, one, two, and three. Then the power set of A is equal to the set that I have listed there with eight elements. The eight elements are the empty set, the sets of size one, each consisting of the elements one, two, and three respectively. Then the sets of size two that have elements one, two, one, three, and two, three. And then we have a single set of size three, which is just A. And that gives us a total of one plus three plus three plus one, which is eight elements in the power set of A. So here is a natural question that we can ask. If set A has n elements, how many elements are in the power set of A? This question is actually the same by definition of power set as counting the total number of subsets of A. One way that we could do this count is by counting the number of subsets of A of size K for each K from zero, one, two, up to N. And then we just add all of those quantities together. That gives us the sum of K equals zero to N of N choose K. If we knew how to simplify this sum, then this would be more useful, but there is a slightly more direct method that will get us the answer that we're looking for. So here is the faster way. First, note that we can relabel the elements of A so that they are labeled with the numbers one, two, up to N. Now we see that the problem that we are trying to solve is the same as counting the total number of subsets of A. And in particular, 
we can count these subsets by treating them as binary strings of length n. Each subset, we're going to encode it as a binary string. How will we do this encoding? Well, let's consider any subset of A. It has distinct elements, x1, x2, up to xk. Recall that we relabeled the elements of A so that they're labeled with numbers 1, 2, up to n. And this subset, x1, x2, up to xk, we will encode it with the binary string, which has ones in the x1, x2, up to xk digits, and zeros in all of the other digits. So the ones in this binary string of length n are telling us which elements are in the subset. And the zeros tell us which elements are not in the subset. We know that there are two to the n binary strings of length n because there are two choices for each digit and there are n digits. So we get two times two times two times two n times. Thus, we can conclude that there are also two to the n elements in the power set of A, if A has n elements. In other words, the cardinality of the power set of A equals two to the cardinality of A. Note that we also found that two to the n and the sum k equals zero to n of n choose k are different ways of writing the quantity that we were looking for. So both of those numbers represent the same quantity. In other words, they are equal. So we actually proved an identity that the sum k equals zero to n of n choose k is equal to two to the n. So now I have another problem for you. Find the number of subsets of one, two up to n with an odd number of elements. Thanks very much for watching.